Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is John Mark Malucci. I am so happy you decided to join me today. In today's video, we will be doing some Scorpio dance therapy. Scorpio dance therapy, it's really great for connecting you with your power and this kind of deeper, your deeper resources that you may not realize are there, um, really connecting with what imbues you with a sense of sovereignty and of uh, strength that Scorpio is really known for. Um, Scorpio is a sign that represents power, so coming into your power and uh, allowing yourself to be powerful. Scorpio dance therapy can also <laughs> Scorpio dance therapy can also be really helpful in dealing with power struggles. Uh, Scorpio might, you know, conflict with others in a quest for power and can sometimes bring enemies that also <laughs> want the power and it creates a lot of tension. Um, so in learning how to disengage from power struggles and creatively uh, transmute that tension and that conflict, uh, we'll explore that in this video. Scorpio dance therapy can also be great um, in recognizing addictions and the cycles of addiction, uh, the highs and lows. Scorpio is very much about, uh, it's very all or nothing. <laughs> it's very, uh, either you have everything or you have nothing. Uh, and a lot of times addictions, uh, in, addic in addictive cycles, we get addicted to both the highs and the lows. Scorpio very high, Scorpio very low. So being able to recognize that and uh, accepting the, the waves and highs and lows and we'll, well, again, we'll talk about that more in the video. The last uh, concept that we'll talk about with Scorpio Dance Therapy today is that of forgiveness. Uh, Scorpio can often struggle with forgiveness. It has a tendency to hold on to resentments and bitterness. And we will be exploring some of the philosophy behind forgiving, as well as <sighs> its importance. Scorpio, or really anyone, not just Scorpio, when you hold on to um, resentments, it's, I've heard it said, resenting someone is somewhat like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You don't really help yourself uh, in resenting uh, and being bitter. So we'll talk about that <laughs> more through the course of the video. All right, without further ado, let's get started. To get us acclimated with the essence of Scorpio, the first uh, set of movements will focus on really centering us in our power and moving in a way that connects us with what makes us feel powerful. Be in touch with the deep internal strength that you have inside of you, this immense, immense power that really is limitless. Allow it to flow through you Feel the energy flowing through your body and let yourself be at one with it. For this next exercise, I want you to consider some of the people in your life that you engage in power struggles with, that you battle with for control. Through your movement, embody the tension that occurs between you two as you fight for power over each other, for the psychological upper hand, for control, for whatever prize you two compete for and struggle against each other for. Notice the pushing and the pulling against each other and the tension and exhaustion that it creates within both of you. Now that you've felt that tension, that conflict, and that being stuck in that conflict, really, I want you to try to do something a little bit crazy. I want you to imagine 
dancing with that person that you conflict with. Tension and conflict fuel and keep a power struggle alive. If you're able to dance with your enemy, to invite them to dance with you, they no longer are your enemy. And the power inherent in the struggle is transmuted. It's released. Rather than following the same routine of tension and strife, you can open the door to new possibilities of relating. Doing so may bewilder your partner at first, as you, <laughs> as they aren't used to anything but the conflict. You might not be either. Um, but through doing so, you open the door to other opportunities, and you see that conflict and the struggle for power and control does not have to be the only way in which you relate. The purpose of this exercise isn't to get you to necessarily literally dance with your partner or the person that you <laughs> engage in the power struggle with, um, but it can really open your mind um, to releasing that conflict and responding creatively to them. It can help to switch up the dynamic so that the next time they push your button or they pull you in a certain direction, you know that that push or that pull can be an impetus to respond differently uh, rather than give in to the same uh, pushback or pullback that you may normally respond with. You may be surprised by the response you get and the possibilities that you uncover through relating in a way that diffuses conflict and creates something that's somewhat <laughs> whimsical and uh, open instead. The next concept we'll touch on with Scorpio Dance Therapy is that of addiction. Addiction does not have to only revolve around drugs and alcohol or substances. Um, we can be addicted to certain modes of behavior, certain feelings that we cling to and uh, draw an identity from. In your movement, I ask you to embody a high of emotion where there's this feeling of ecstasy. And subsequently, I ask you to embody the low, or a low of emotion, where there could be agony and immense pain. I want you to imagine reaching for your high, um, for this emotional high that you may feel it's impossible to live without. Be aware of the cycle and embody the inevitable return to that low. Through this exercise, we're able to give form to the cycles of highs and lows that can come from our various addictions. And in doing so, we see that um, inevitably, even when we <laughs> fight tooth and nail to remain high, we eventually will come down and uh, have to experience the low that matches that high. Through allowing ourselves to experience our lows and being present with them, bringing our full awareness to whatever lows we may feel, we can effectively honor them and learn whatever lesson the low may be trying to teach us. There's a saying that the tree whose branches reach to heaven has roots that reach to hell. In every high and every low, we experience a fuller balance because 
High does not exist without low, and low doesn't exist without high. It's the balance between them that brings divinity, that brings greater harmony and peace. I do want to make clear that because of the complicated and complex nature of addictions and dependencies, I don't go into full depth um, as to how to treat them. If you are struggling with a severe addiction or dependency, I would highly recommend getting in touch with a healthcare provider or some sort of rehabilitation uh, program or directive. This video and this past exercise um, shouldn't be taken as primary uh, care or primary treatment to severe dependencies and addictions. Um, I just wanted to state that just so to keep those that uh, may be suffering severely safe and from using this as um, pure means to overcome addiction. The last concept we'll touch on for this video is that of forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness is one of the most important lessons for Scorpio to learn as they have a tendency to hold on to grudges and bitterness towards those that they've seen as wronging them in some way. In your movements, I ask you to intentionally uh, allow yourself to experience anger or resentment that you may hold. Allow your hurt and your confusion to be felt and be 100% present with this feeling, um, with these feelings. Whatever comes up, allow yourself to express it through movement. Now, as you are fully present with your feeling, with your resentment, I want you to do something that you may balk at at first. I want you to say, I forgive you. Whoever has caused you that pain, I want you to say out loud, I forgive you. I think sometimes people fear forgiving because they think if they forgive someone, or if they forgive some situation, that situation will happen again and again, and they'll be a victim to circumstance once more. But really, the funny thing is, the more we are unwilling to forgive, the more we cling to an experience um, and create a sort of identity from whatever trauma or tension that we may have gone through, the more we perpetuate that situation, the more we experience that feeling that we sought to never feel again, to never experience again, because we perpetuate it within our own mind, within our own body, and within our own response to those memories. Through forgiving, we're able to release not only the other person, um, but ourselves from situations that ultimately harmed us. That doesn't mean we don't take lessons from those situations. That doesn't mean that we don't respect ourselves and think that harming and destruction of ourselves um, is, is normal and should just be submitted to. Um, instead, it allows us to heal and realize that through forgiving, we allow ourselves um, freedom from those perpetual patterns of being hurt. And um, in forgiving, we, we learn the lesson, but we forget them. We forget the feeling. We forget that uh, constant bitterness and through this forgiving and forgetting, we're able to move on in our life and um, not, not take that feeling and create an identity from it. Um, instead, we transmute the feeling and move on and allow ourselves to be more creatively inspired through moving on.
and through forgiving. I also want to note that forgiveness is a process, so you may not immediately feel the release of your resentment and your anger when you are saying out loud, I forgive you. It, it could take multiple, <laughs> multiple times where when you, think of, when you think of this person, you can say, I forgive you, instead of going into that, uh, that more viscerally uh, resentful experience. So allow yourself that, um, be patient with yourself and be diligent and disciplined uh, when you're forgiving. I've heard it said that it's really hard to forgive, but does that make holding on to that bitterness, that resentment easier? Is that easy? Um, yeah, that, that really struck me that I think Marianne Williamson said that. So yeah, just allow yourself, be patient with yourself, but continue the work because it really is worth it. By forgiving a situation, by forgiving in general, we're able to transmute our bitterness and resentment into something that's lighter and experience this sense of lightness because of it. Allow yourself to experience this lightness in your movement. Through forgiving, we become free, and we allow ourselves to step into our divine destiny in more fullness and sureness. Alright, well, that will do it for today's video. I really enjoyed making it, and I hope you all find value in it. If you would like to schedule a session with me, either a dance therapy session or an astrological reading, I will leave my contact information in the description below. Alright, well... Thank you so much, and uh, I love all of you. God bless. Till next time.